This video is for opponents and Thurgood students in music classes to complete the worksheets that you're supposed to do on January 13th and 14th, 2022. First page, how loud, how soft. So in music, you have pitch, which is the high and the low. You have rhythm, which is the long and the short. This one is dynamics, which is the loud and the soft. This first symbol right here is an F that looks like it's written in cursive. We say forte for that. Forte F, that means loud. The next one is P. P stands for piano, kind of like the pianos that people play. It stands for quiet or soft is the word we tend to use and is marked by kind of a cursive looking P. So F is forte, P is piano, forte, loud, piano, soft. And believe it or not, the full name to the pianos you see are actually piano fortes, which means they play loud and soft, or soft and loud. Anyways, two Fs is very loud. It's the word that you say is fortissimo or fortissimo. Um, FF, very loud, fortissimo. PP is very soft, so pianissimo is the word that we say, pianissimo. Um, some people say pianissimo. I just say pianissimo. MF is medium loud or mezzo forte. It does kind of look like mezzo, um, which is right around here, this word right here. It looks like mezzo, but it's pronounced mezzo, mezzo forte. And then we have MP, mezzo piano, medium soft. So our plain F is forte, loud, P, piano, soft, FF, fortissimo, very loud, PP, pianissimo, very soft, MF, mezzo forte, medium loud, MP, mezzo piano, medium soft. If you look down here at the um, different information below, it's telling you that the terms are in Italian. Um, it the terms are placed on the musical staffs that you read and you stay at that dynamic until the dynamic changes. So for example, at the beginning right here, it says F, so we play the beginning loud. Then when we get to the P, we have to switch to soft. So the first measure is loud, the second measure is soft, and the third measure, it switches to very loud. So in this song, you play this part, loud, this part soft, and the rest of it very loud. At the bottom there is a chart of dynamics from softest to loudest. So pianissimo is the softest, up one level would be piano, up another level mezzo piano, another level mezzo forte, another level forte, finally land on fortissimo. So all of that information is going to help you be able to answer the questions on the back of that page. So if you flip over at the top, you're going to look and see which one is louder. Well, I just read through a chart that talks about the loudest being on this side and the softest being on that side. So flip your page back over and compare the two, which one is on the louder side, which one is on the softer side, and then circle the one that's louder. When you get to this section, though, you have to switch which one is softer. So you're gonna go back up to that previous page and think, okay, what's over closer to the softest side and circle that one. What does each dynamic level mean? Write the correct level from the second column in the blank space. So look at all these and then look at these and whichever one corresponds with each one you write that. So this one P, P means soft, so I'm gonna write the letter F here. And then you continue to do it for the rest of them. Match the Italian term with the dynamic symbol. So it's wanting you to match the word with the letters. Again, if you need help, go back to this previous page. Right around here, you can look and see what the symbols and then their Italian words are within these different paragraphs right around here. Moving on to the next page, more about loud and soft more about loud and soft. At the very top, it talks about how there are gradual changes in the dynamics often. So if something is like suddenly loud, it might go from piano straight to forte. 
Other times it's going to gradually get louder or gradually get softer, which is where we use the words crescendo, which goes with this symbol right here. It starts small and gets bigger, which means it's going to start quiet, then get louder or go from piano to forte, something like that. So that is gradually getting louder, crescendo, gradually getting louder. Down here, the word is decrescendo, but some people say diminuendo for that one. I tend to stick to decrescendo, so if you have me, I'll definitely say decrescendo. Diminuendo is another option. It's best to know both. This one, you start louder and you get softer. Therefore, this one is going to be gradually getting softer. Decrescendo means gradually get softer. Sometimes crescendo and decrescendo signs are called wedges or hairpins. You might hear some people say that. You might just hear them say the proper term. Around here at this music that's right on this section, take a look. We're going to start off P. If I look at previous pages, P means piano. When I get to measure two right here, <clears throat> I have this symbol, which is the gradually get louder symbol. So I'm going to go gradually note by note and get louder and louder and louder until I land on medium loud in that measure. When I go to the second line down here, I'm going to still be at mezzo forte because it didn't change. So down here, since we ended up mezzo forte at the first line, we're going to take it down and start mezzo forte on the second line. Then when I get to the decrescendo sign, I'm going to gradually get softer until I get to the piano. And then when I get over to this measure right here, I'm going to gradually get louder until the forte, the loud. So if I look at the different symbols, it kind of gives me the little road map, like the signs on the road to know what to do for each part. Uh, instead of seeing the symbols, sometimes you'll actually see little abbreviations. So sometimes you'll see crish instead of crescendo, decrish instead of decrescendo, or dim instead of diminuendo. Flip over. All the questions that are on this page can be answered by the stuff on the previous side. So decrescendo means the same as this symbol right here means all of those answers on the previous page. When we get down to the second set of questions, it is going to ask you if the dynamics are correct or incorrect. So basically, I'm going to look at the first one, then I'm going to look at the symbol or the words in between and go, okay, does it make sense to go from this to that? So if I look at this first one, it says it starts with P, and then it ends on PP, so piano to pianissimo, which is quiet to very quiet. If I look at the symbol in between, that is a crescendo or gradually get louder. It doesn't really work to gradually get louder when you start at soft and go to very soft. So this one is going to be incorrect. Look at the other ones and think, okay, the first one means this, the second one means that, the symbol in between them, does it connect the two together? And then you're gonna choose your correct or incorrect. Do that for number two and number three. Finally, at the bottom, how loud or soft is the music at A, B, C, and D? So A, B, C, D. For A, you're gonna circle one of these, B, one of those two, C, or D. For example, if I start just with A, underneath A, there's a P. So if I go over to my A that's right here, it says soft or loud. So I have to decide if P means soft or loud. When I go over to B, underneath the B symbol is MF. So I go down to my B that's right here. I have to decide if MF means medium loud or medium soft. Then I do the same for C and for D. Flip a page. How fast, how slow? 
Um, so we have high or low, long or short, loud or soft. Now, long and short is super related to fast and slow, but fast and slow is talking about the steady beat of the music as opposed to long and short, which is talking about how many beats each thing gets. That's why having that steady beat, that tap, 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 tap is important because sometimes we might have dun, 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 dun. That's the long and the short. If I do that exact same thing, but I have a slower tempo. Bum, 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 bum. Sounds much different. So the tempo is that steady beat. It's like the pulse of the music. And the tempo is going to be fast or slow or somewhere in between. So in this paragraph right here, it's telling you uh, a word or two at the beginning of a piece of music will often tell you how fast it's going to be. Sometimes they are in Italian words. And some of the more common Italian words are right here. Whee. Now these, they have pronunciation guides next to them, but so you know, this first one, largo, like large, it means very slow. Second one is adagio, it just means slow. So very slow is largo, slow adagio. Next one is andante. Andante is at a moderate speed. Often we call it walking speed or walking tempo. Moderato. Moderato means f moderately, but it's usually a little bit faster than that walking tempo. This one kind of goes from slow to fast. Fast being at the bottom. Next one down is Allegro. It means fast. Sometimes they, people say fast and lively or bright for that one. It's kind of related to alegre, which is, I think, is Spanish for happy. Anyways, vivace. I know it looks like vivace, but it's in Italian. So vivace is very fast. And then at the bottom is presto, kind of like presto changeo. It's very fast and faster than vivace. So those are the common terms for a speed. Just like in the um, dynamics, you can get louder and softer quickly, you can get louder and softer gradually. And these are some of the words that help with the gradual stuff. Um, we have some gradually slower words and gradually faster words. Retardando, or RIT period, means gradually slower. Similarly, Rallentando, or R-A-L-L, -L, Rall, means gradually slower. Accelerando, or Accel, means gradually faster. Kind of looks like accelerate. And then this is A tempo. I know it looks like A tempo, but it's A tempo. It means return to the previous tempo. So if you were going slower, 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 but then you're supposed to restart at the same speed you started at in the first place, that's where you would use a tempo. Tempo markings are usually placed above the staff. Changes in tempo are usually placed below the staff. So this first one says adagio. If I look at adagio up at the top, adagio is slow. So I'm going to start off slow in this piece. Keep going slow, 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 slow. Up right here it says a chill. Or if I check up here, a chill means a chillerando, gradually get faster. So here I'm going to go faster, 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 faster. But then I get to this, RIT. RIT is the RIT or retardando. That means I'm going to get slower after that. Okay, here is a chart of tempos, or tempi is the technical word for that, but whatever, um, from slowest to fastest. It's also from slowest to fastest up here. 
Largo being the slowest, and each one gradually gets a little bit faster than the next. On the back of that page, final page, yay! Which tempo marking is faster? Use that chart at the bottom of the previous page. Which one is faster? So here I'm going to have to circle either Largo is faster or Presto is faster. Here I'm going to circle Vivace is faster or Adagio is faster. Next it says which tempo marking is slower. So here either Presto is slower or Andante is slower. Here either Moderato is slower or Vivace is slower. What does each tempo marking mean? So I'm going to have to look at what does Allegre, bleh, Allegro mean. Go on that previous page. Allegro was fast. So I'm going to have to put the letter A for fast besides Allegro. Um, I continue down that for the rest of these. Hello. Where's the undo button? Someone stole my undo button. That stinks. There it is. Sorry about that. Um, down here at the very bottom, what does each of these tempo changes mean? So it's asking you, what does this symbol mean? Is it gradually slower, gradually faster, or return to previous tempo? Whichever one it is, you're going to write the letter, either A or B or C right beside it. If you have any questions, um, you can email whichever teacher is yours. Um, I'm fine with you emailing me, whether you have me or not. My email is kgthomas at daytonpublic.com.